Okay, guys, we're on the field. We have what looks like a pure Galente team, but I'm sure our commentators, uh, Kill2 and Darius Johnson, will tell you more about that. Hello, hello. Is, uh, whoa. Kill2 here with Darius Johnson. Watch Alliance Tournament, Alliance Tournament 8. This is Atlas Alliance versus Tormentum. Atlas in red on your left, fielding two Vindicators, an Eos, a Myrmidon, an Oneros, three Tyrannus, and two Ishker. Oops, sorry. Uh, and Tormentum is fielded at carries. Uh, Drake, Drake, Rook, 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 Nemesis, 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 and Scimitar. And we should say, before the match starts, uh, Tormentum, this is the identical setup they brought in round one. It did really well for them in round one, and they haven't switched a thing down to the last carry. So, see if it holds up again. Um, and as far as ranges, it uh, looks like Atlas has come in almost completely at zero on the beacon there. Uh, Oneros is just a little bit off, and all of the Tormentum team come in at max range 50k from the beacon. And we're underway. Uh, the uh, Tormentum team is, has started moving towards the Atlas team. Um, we have some drones out. They look like uh, Valkyrie twos uh, on the Tormentum side, and we've had bomb and we have bombs launched. And another bullseye. Uh, at least took out some drones. Did some damage to those Vindicators, though not too much compared to what we saw earlier. And it looks like. Um, Tormentum is going to be going for the Atlas Tacklers first. They're putting a lot of torpedoes on one of those Ishkers. Tyrann is coming in as well. Not too worried about the Vindicators, which are moving um, free and clear right now at about 1,200 meters a second toward the middle of that Tormentum team. Yeah, it looks like they've uh, they, they primary the, the Ishkar uh, on, on the Atlas side. Um, as it stands, Tormentum really hasn't taken any damage. Uh, the Scimitar looks like it was hit. A little bit, but I mean, you're only looking at a sliver of shield damage there. Um, while the Atlas team is is taking some damage, um, the Ishka, one of their Ishkers is about to explode. Um, the another Ishker is in, in armor, and you still have uh, uh, about half to 25% of the shields taken away from the initial bomb volley by uh, uh, Tormentum. And this is a really important uh, chase going on right now. The scimitar looks like it's what they want to shoot. It's moving the scimitar uh, after burn to fit, probably moving between six and 700 meters a second. Vindicator is able to move much uh, faster than that, around 1,200, and they're just now catching up and uh, getting that tackle on the scimitar. So we'll see if he starts to drop a little quicker once they hold him down. Yeah, I mean, he is taking damage, but really it's nothing to write home about. Um, and even on a, e even Tormentum, I mean, Tormentum's doing damage to the other team. It looks like that Oneros now actually entering half armor. Um, but the damage is kind of spread around, not just what they got from the bombs, but the uh, two Ishkers uh, uh, have pretty much all their shields removed. Um, but it looks like they're going to try to take out that Oneros first. Ooh, this is bad for the Oneros and the Vindicators. The the story here is jamming. They haven't had locks most of the time since they caught up since the scimitar to the scimitar. Now one of them does have a lock as well as the Myrmidon. So starting to apply some damage and that scimitar drops fast. Now they need to get some of this jamming out of the picture. It helps them a lot that they're a full Galent team. Galent jammers, no doubt, spread pretty thin. And Galent not going to be uh, a jamming type you're going to really favor coming in to one of these matches since Minmatar and Keldari have been so popular. That Oneros is going to go down, though. We lose him, so both logistics down now. We'll have to see uh, what happens next if they can catch up to some of these other ships. Yeah, it looks like they've switched over to uh, Tormentum to the carries. Um, we also have uh, about... Just over 50% of the shields gone from one of the Nemesis on the uh, Tormentum side. Actually, the carries is gone um, for Tormentum. Um, on the Atlas side, it looks like they've uh, primaried an Eos. Um, it's hitting armor damage now. About 10% uh, has been knocked down. We have a lot of drones on the field right now. It looks like mostly Valkyrie 2s. Uh, uh, and we do have some Warrior 1s as well. So some uh, uh, actually a combination of medium, light, and heavy drones. F seeing so important. This rook tackled and going down fast. Taking out the EOS is a really interesting choice. You get the information links out of there and more of your jams will land. Um, but at the same time, the EOS is going to be one of the tankier ships on the field, even though it did look like they had a pretty hard time taking out the Ishikar. Probably wouldn't so much now that the logistics is gone. But one rook does go down for Tormentum. So, uh, oh man, and a Nemesis going down now as well. I think this looks really bad for Tormentum. They, they do finish off the EOS, so, um, but still eight ships remaining on the Atlas side. Atlas able to go to town on these bombers now with the jamming starting to get out of the picture and no logistics. Another bomber down. So only one bomber left, two rooks and two drakes. I think Atlas has firm control right now.
Yeah, jamming it, when you're when you're filming a jamming team, you tend to you tend to rely very heavily on it, and it also has a big impact on the amount of DPS that you can put out. And once that little circle of jamming breaks, um, it, it, it's it's really hard to to keep up. Yeah, absolutely. And I like I like the fact that they broke that Atlas brought Galent, uh completely. That makes it harder for them to hold that jam. Uh, if they would have brought a full Minmatar setup, like the ones that have been more popular, I assume Tormentum would have had an easier time holding them down with those Rooks. We're about to lose a Myrmidon, though. Still some DPS uh, coming out of this Tormentum team, but there goes another Nemesis. That hurts. That's a lot more damage gone. So now these two Vindicators, um, we haven't talked much about them, but they're awesome. Um, fast, have that web bonus like Marauders to slow things down once they get on top of them. And they were smart, they brought ECCM and sensor boosters, so they've actually had a, a pretty good time getting locks compared to what they might have done if they'd have brought a worse mid setup. Yeah, and it looks like they're going after that, Atlas is going after that second Rook now. Um, one of their Vindicators actually just out of sh uh, shields um, on the Atlas side. Um, but uh, I, I, I don't think it looks very good for, the, for Tormentum as their uh, last Rook explodes, leaving them with only two Drakes. Yeah, yeah, definitely Atlas going to take this, and, and they deserve it. That's a really cool setup, and it's really interesting. I've been talking about I want to see a Bomber setup go down. I'm, I'm pretty surprised Vindicators was a thing to do it. I wouldn't have expected that. I don't know that Tormentum's exact configuration is the best one for the for the you know bomber concept but still it's really cool to see it go down um i was going to say something else but now i don't know what oh that rook uh, i noticed before it went down had smart bombs fit which is kind of interesting keep the light drones off it in case it gets aggro from those yeah one of the other things you pointed out uh, that that bears uh, worth repeating is the fact that that they fielded a, a complete league galente team um which i'm sure had uh, some impact on their ability to uh, jam them um, one of the Vindicators on the on the Atlas side now at 50% shields, um, so those Drakes are still doing some damage, um, but at this point it's uh, uh, probably an exercise in, in, in futility. Now, I'm looking, these Drakes for now are moving extremely slowly, 50 uh, meters a second apiece, really not doing anything. They've got Ewar fit in the midst, but for some reason this Vindicator is just sitting still. Uh, it looks like he's starting to move now, but well, let me see. Okay, okay, he's going to the other Drake. It looked to me like he was just sitting. Uh, but they do have one of the Drake tackled going down now. I don't think this Vindicator is going to go down before the end of the fight. Um, it will be a bit of a trip for them to get from this Drake to the other one, but I still don't... I doubt there's enough damage on that one Drake to finish the Vindicator off before the fight ends. You are seeing uh, the, the armor is dropping on that Vindicator, but uh, I believe you're probably correct as the... Uh one of the last of the two ships for Tormentum, uh, a Drake explodes, um, and we're going to uh, see Atlas move towards that second Drake, which is uh, on the other side of the field. Yeah, and it's tackled already by the Frags. It's got the uh, Tyrannuses and Ishkars already here putting a little damage on it, but that Vindicator was close. They almost lost that, and those aren't cheap either. It kind of seems silly to talk about how expensive a Vindicator is after last match, seeing the you know Freckies and flagships and stuff. But Vindicator will put you back, you know, at 900 million or whatever right now. So they don't want to lose it. That's for sure. <laughs> Seems to have been vindicated. Ooh. Wait, who's vindicated? The Vindicator. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to figure out how far these Vindicators are to see when this Drake's going to actually go down. Well, he's in he's in half shields now, and once that shield is gone, um, that Drake's all but dead. I was trying to get a max speed on the Vindicators to figure out exactly how fast they are, since that's kind of uh, really important in a match like this. It looks to me, I think I saw him go about 1200 right now though uh, kind of maxing out at about 10 i bet they overheated the micro warps when they first made their way across the field to get there as soon as they possibly could and now running at normal speed 988 or something and you know that's that's a dynamic we don't get to see a lot in the tournament uh because of the nature of our view but overheating um playing a huge role in a lot of the matches i'm sure when you see tanking that's really close or uh the start of matches to produce speed or damage like uh, in this fight and there goes that last drake so awesome job atlas we'll see you in the finals uh, next weekend and uh, we'll go back to sound wave 
Thank you very much, guys. Yes, certainly uh, they will be in the final weekend, as will all the other winners uh, after the break. After the break, of course, we've been uh, having all the teams that won last weekend, um, and two wins is uh, a guaranteed ticket into the final weekend. Atlas uh, earning their ticket there. Good setup, well played. Uh, next match is in nine minutes. It's Get Off My Lawn versus the Ronin. The Ronin, of course, a uh, former RUR team, which surprised us a little bit uh, a year or two ago. Anyway, that's at uh, that's at 20 um, eve time, and we will be right back in about five minutes.